everyone, my name is Miss Alyssa. I'm at, here at the Azusa City Library, and today we're going to be making some spring salt paintings. So a little bit about this craft. Um, we're going to be working with the idea of uh, salt being hydrophilic. So what do I mean by that? So hydrophilic means it loves water, it means it will absorb water, it will touch the water, uh, and that is opposite of hydrophobic. So hydrophobic, it's, you know, doesn't really like water, it's maybe even scared of water. And so you can see by the little, uh, this is like a water drop. And if water comes in contact with a surface that is hydrophilic, it will be kind of absorbed into the surface. Versus hydrophobic, uh, if a water drop comes into contact with something that is hydrophobic, like a, a for example, uh, like a leaf, I'll show you a picture of that later, then the water actually won't be absorbed into the surface. You can kind of see it kind of beads up. So it's, if you look, it, this is a good example. This is a little plant leaf. Cellulose is what plants are generally made of, and it is generally hydrophobic. So you can see the little beads are kind of like the little water droplets are beading up on the surface of the water, making those little round uh, balls. And But today we're working with the other idea, which is hydrophilic, which is something like salt, sugar, um, those, those types of uh, materials will absorb the water into it and attract it. So let's go ahead and get started. I have my materials here. I have some paper. This is some watercolor paper, but regular cardstock will work as well. I have a little cup of water here, and I have some more just in case I need it. I have some salt in this big one, and in this one I have some glue. Now if you just have a regular kind of squeeze bottle, uh, you can use that instead of painting the glue on. And in each of these little containers is a little bit of food coloring. So we'll, I'm not going to worry about that yet because our first step is to draw our design. So I have a pencil here and I'm just going to draw a really basic design. So I might draw a rainbow. So um, a rainbow is generally in the sky so I think I'll draw a little cloud here. Just kind of a little cloud like that maybe. And then I'll draw kind of the lines of the rainbow. Now, of course, you don't have to draw what I'm drawing. If you want to draw a flower, maybe, or maybe like some animals. I saw a couple of people draw a tree with a little pond. So you can draw whatever you want. But I would keep it simple because our next step would be to trace over our picture with some glue okay so once you're done with your drawing all you need to do is look I'll go ahead and open up my glue container I'm gonna take my brush and again if you have a squeeze bottle I would just try to trace your pencil markings with the squeeze bottle but I'll show you how to do it with the paintbrush so I'm just gonna take some glue on my paintbrush and I'm just gonna draw or trace over with my brush on my pencil markings. And you kind of want it a little bit thick. Thicker the better because the thicker it is, the more salt that can attach to it. So kind of like that. I'm really glopping on the paint here just so that I have a really good surface for the salt to attach to later on. And I might even do a second coat later just to add, make sure my, my glue lines are nice and thick. You don't, you wanna, if, uh, if you can kinda see your pencil mark over your, through your glue, and try adding a little bit more glue to cover up your pencil mark. You might see it a little bit through the glue, but if you see like a really dark line, then try to cover that up with some glue. So 
So I wonder what you guys can think of a couple other things that are hydrophilic or hydrophobic. So if we remember hydrophilic means that it loves water, it wants to attach itself to water or wants to draw water to it, absorb the water inside. So what are some things that absorb water? The first thing that comes to mind for me is like a towel. <laughs> like after I'm taking a shower or a bath, I'll towel off. So certain cloth is hydrophilic, meaning it will absorb the water from, from us. So in general, paper in that case might be hydrophilic. It absorbs the water, although certain types of paper might be more hydrophobic. And I can do a little demonstration later. This particular paper here that we're using is uh, watercolor paper, and that's generally very, uh, it doesn't absorb water very easily so that it stays intact. I would think that another, something else that is hydrophobic, if you think about uh, a craft that we did in the past, uh, a wax resist craft, uh, basically you would take some, some uh, a crayon, a crayons are generally made of wax, and you would draw on your paper with the, with the crayon, and then you would paint over that, and basically the crayon pre pre uh, prevents the color from getting into the paper because it's covered with the wax. So wax, uh, oil generally is hydrophobic. If you remember oil and water don't mix and that's because oil is hydrophobic. Okay, I think I'm almost done. I have a couple of spots I think I wanna thicken up a little bit. Okay, so once I have my picture kind of covered up, so you see I have some sort of thick, thick lines, that way lots of salt can attach to it. And once I'm done covering that, I'm going to put my lid back on my glue, and then I think I'm going to leave my, oh, just grab my paper towel. I'm gonna leave my, you might wanna uh, wash your brush right, right away. So I think, I'm not gonna do it in that cup, but I'll wash it later. That way you don't have, you can use the brush later on if you need. Um, so I have my glue, I'm gonna let it dry a little bit. And in the meantime, I'm going to start, make, oh actually, let's, I think I'm skipping a step. Yes, so I'm skipping a step, my mistake. So the next step is to sprinkle our salt. So I have a little tray like this that I'm gonna put my picture in. If you don't have a, maybe you have like a baking tray at home, something kind of long or like a large platter. Um, I'm just gonna do it this way so that I don't get salt all over my table. And we're gonna open up our salt container and I'm just going to kind of sprinkle the salt over my glue. Okay, and you could use all your salt or maybe you only use half your salt. It kind of depends on how much glue you apply to. But I just want to make sure the whole surface is covered. So I have my whole, all the glue is covered with my salt. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift and let the loose salt that's not attached to the glue just fall off. And I might give it a couple of shakes, a couple of taps. And you can kind of see now I have this, you can kind of see that the, the salt is attached to the glue now, okay? We got kind of a 3D effect there. You can kind of see it better like that, that we have these raised ridges of our salt, okay? So I'm just gonna stick that there and I'll put this over here. Actually, I might pour my salt back in so I can reuse it. Okay, so the next step, once our canvas is covered, 
with the salt and we shake off the excess, we're gonna mix the colors. So I put a little bit of food coloring, coloring. Oh, sorry, I think my camera, come on. <laughs> Let me just reboot the, the camera real quick. I think it froze a little bit. Sorry about that. All right, so I put a little bit of food coloring in each little container here. And so now I'm just going to open the lid on each. Okay, so you can kind of see there's a little bit of food coloring in there. And now when I add my water, hopefully it will mix. Okay, so this one is turning red. I think I'm gonna use my pipette just to mix, because it sort of dried a little bit, but there we go. So now it's turning nice and nice and red. Okay, now this one I think is gonna be blue maybe. Oh, no, it's green. <laughs> so that one turned green. Again, I'll give it a little mix. Okay, this one I think is yellow. Yep, so that's nice and yellow. And again, I'll give this a mix, just with my pipette. And this last one should be blue. There we go. Okay, so I have all my colors here. Now, if you want extra colors, then you're just gonna have to mix them in order to make the color, okay? Um, so to start off with, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a blue streak on the top, or maybe I'll do red. If we're thinking of the colors of the rainbow, red starts first generally. So I have my empty pipette. I'm basically going to squeeze the end like that, and then I'm going to insert the tip while my fingers are squeezed into the red, and you can see it sucks up the color, the liquid color, okay? So now when I drop the color on, I don't want to squeeze too much. I just want to just barely, so if I just barely squeeze a little drop out like that, you can see just one drop I accidentally fell on the table. That's okay. That's what paper towels are for. So I'm just going to barely squeeze out one drop and I'm going to have that one drop touch the salt. And you can kind of see there that it's spreading a little bit. So I'm going to do little drops all the way up. Again, you don't need to squeeze that much. You're just barely touching the salt with one little drop. And then once I'm done, so I finish that whole line, I'm just gonna squeeze the tip to push out all the red. So now it's empty, but I still see a little bit of color in there. So what I'm gonna do is in my clean water cup, I'm just gonna kind of squeeze a couple of times and squeeze out the excess water so now it's all clean. Okay, so anytime you need to switch colors, do a quick rinse in your cup by squeezing that end so the water goes in and out and then squeeze out all the excess water to get it nice and clean. So the next color I think in my line is going to be green. So again, I squeeze the end, I insert the tip into the cup and I pull out some, some of the color so that I got my green, and I'm just going to, again, drop one tiny little drop. I'm kind of just not even let pushing the, the drop out. I'm just barely having it touch the salt, because that's all you need. If you add too, if you happen to add too much, I'll show you what to do, okay? So I'm gonna, let me just finish this. I'm gonna get all the way to the end. I think I need a little bit there. So for example, if I added a little bit too much color here, I'm gonna empty that out. Basically just start with an empty pipette and you can kinda, again, same principle as when we suck water from the cup, I'm just gonna suck some water from my painting. I'm just gonna kinda gently touch and let it suck up and then I'll, I'll empty it out. 
that's a way to kind of clean up your your paper if you accidentally drop some a little bit of color where you didn't want it to okay and so sorry i'm just double checking something real quick there we go all right so the next color roy g it's gonna be blue i think oh no 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 Oh, you know what? It should have been yellow green. Okay. I honestly don't know my colors of rainbow. That's okay. I think I'll go ahead and just put blue here and then yellow. So mine's going to be a weird, <laughs> a weird uh, rainbow. So I suck the color up. I'm just going to put little drops. And let the salt absorb the color. You probably won't even be using up all this color that you have in your cups. Or maybe what you can do, again, what if you, you don't need to use a watercolor paper. If you have some cardstock at home, then you could try doing the same, maybe a second painting on some cardstock. Okay, and then I'm going to do yellow last on this bottom one here. Now, if I wanted to mix some of my colors, so for example, if I wanted to make some purple, we could try a little experiment here on our little cup lid. So I might squeeze a little bit of blue into my cup lid like that, wash my pipette, and then I might try adding a little bit of red See if we get sort of a purple color. I'm going to add a little bit more red. It won't be a perfect purple, but I can already tell it's a little bit purple. Maybe a little hard to tell on camera, but you can kind of mix and match the colors on your lid like this. And then once you're happy with the color, then maybe I'll go ahead and suck that up. A little easier kind of to see it's kind of a dark purple I might maybe put that on my cloud a little bit kind of get with that rainbow effect okay maybe I'll try doing like what's another coat now about some orange so orange will need to have some red again just squeeze a little bit of red and then a little bit of yellow maybe a lot of yellow I think I need more yellow than red let's add a lot, a lot of yellow let's see what that does okay I want like that and I'll add that onto my cloud as well some right here. I think I'll add a little bit more I might put some green or blue on this side of my cloud and basically you would let this dry maybe overnight on a flat surface and once it's completely dry then you can hang it up or display it and it has this nice cool raised effect all right so let's see before you guys go oh yeah that's right we did our last our last step already um, so before you guys while you guys are finishing up but before you guys go uh, our next STEM, STEAM craft is going to be DIY hydroponics. 
So that's going to be March 22nd at 3 o'clock in the library. Or again, you can get a take home kit and then the live stream will be at 4 o'clock. We also have Discovery Club here at the library. This is a free drop-in program that you don't have to register for. That is going to be every Thursday in March except for uh, the last Thursday in March. So that would be the 3rd, the 10th, the 17th, and the 24th. Those Thursdays we have this Discovery Club activity where we, uh, I think last week we built some wiggle bots and some sale cards. So that and we'll have a different uh, activity every, every week. So that is free and that is, you don't need a register, just stop in the library at, uh, from 3 to 4.30 on Thursday. And then we also have an upcoming gardening craft for kids. That's March 21st from 3.30 to 4.30. Um, so that one you will have to register for. You can register at the Azusa.gov Civic Rec or I believe the link is below in the description box. And then we also have our Baby and Bots STEAM program. This is for ages one to five. That's gonna be Monday, March 28th at 11 a.m. where we're gonna be building a little tiny robot. And our last program of the month is gonna be our Level Up program. We're bringing this back. It got uh, canceled due to uh, us not having in-person programming last month, but now we're back. So Thursday, March 31st from 2.30 to 4.30, that's gonna be in the library auditorium. It's free, you come in, we have a bunch of Nintendo Switches set up that you can play from our game collection. We have uh, Smash Brothers, Breath of the Wild, Just Dance, Luigi's Mansion, Let's Go Pikachu, and a, a whole lot more. And we also have a little prize wheel that you can spin and earn some cool prizes. We have some 3D printed prizes that you can earn by spinning the wheel. And then of course every Tuesdays at 11 a.m. This is in person now, our story time with Miss Ginger. So every Tuesday 11 a.m. come on into the library to have a uh, story time with Miss Ginger and I know she does some crafts afterwards as well. And then I also have my story time on Wednesdays. Sorry, <laughs> I just realized the this is the wrong <laughs> flyer but it's actually Wednesdays at 11 a.m. not on Instagram it's in person I'm gonna make sure that flyer is changed for the next time but so yeah it's in person at 11 a.m. and uh, if you guys enjoyed the program please take our survey you can scan this QR code with your phone or I believe the link is in the description box below it really helps us to get your feedback and then you can also suggest upcoming stem uh, topics that we can go over so uh, please take our survey so we can uh, find out what, uh, what you guys think of our program. So uh, thanks again for joining me. Turn that off. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed your little painting. I have mine right here. Ooh, can't quite see it because of the green screen. But uh, hopefully we'll see you guys next time. Okay. Thank you.